The legend of Tennessee, Multisanti, I must be loyal to my capo, as Christopher wrote in his wee memoirs or his movie casting script. What would you make of his 19 page movie classic? Well, I, anytime we've seen it, he got about what, half a paragraph in, like, and there was a bunch of spell mistakes. How's this guy ever going to write a novel or a book? Yeah, I don't know what he was going for, man. Is he on the gear? I mean, well, I think you know, he he's must definitely be. on the gear. He's injecting heroin into his fucking toes. Well, I think, he's, I think he stole all Brandon's as well. Brandon's? Brandon's, Brandon's. Today's bread today. But talking about Brandon, we'll get to him later on. But we kick off with a wedding we've got. Larry, he basically informs basically all the crew here that aye, there's going to be indictments, but. I feel like this was done very poor. Like, you had no idea. How does he know? Well, he reveal, well, He says that he's got a, a guy in the FBI. He knows a guy, a source in the FBI says there's going to be federal indictments. But again, it's like, we kick off the episode and it's like, we're just thrown into this wedding. Now, you did get Christopher before it having nightmares. And I actually thought it was a pretty well done scene. It, it looked like a really cheesy B-horror movie, though. It did, but that kind of is what your dreams are i know but it did i don't know like so the guy christopher kelt comes in and he's speaking to him christopher's like working in a butcher shop and the guy says oh you kill me and then he's taking the bullets out his head sausages he sausages. Wants, i want saw it and then we see christopher and it's almost like he's working in subway he gets like the baguette roll out and then he, he's putting meat and the guy's like i want dead meat and then he keeps putting meat and there's like this hand it's like a dead hand like a zombie hand and it keeps giving it, it keeps handing Christopher the meat or whatever <laughs> it was fucking weird and then eventually the hand grabs onto Christopher and tries to pull him down into the meat section and Christopher's like let go of me let me go and then he you know busts up and he sits up and does the, does an undertaker in his bedroom basically at night sweating pulverizing and it's a bad dream so I mean I mean it was a bad dream but again is it because, what, what is this man, the guy just wants recognition, it was a Christopher episode. It was a, it was a heavy Christopher episode. No, I mean, I actually like, I kind of like Christopher, I'd say he's one of my, one of my favourite characters, like. Would you say that? Well, take away Tony, I'd say I, uh, I mean. <laughs> probably, but uh, the guys are basically discussing. Alright, but what, what episode are we in here, number wise? Eight. Eight. Well, let's be real, take, let's take Tony out of the equation here. You'd have to say Christopher maybe had the most screen time. Ah, it's a one horse. No, you could you could argue Tony's family's had more screen time, but that's kind of more like background screen time. That's I mean, you you no can one cares about that you screen can, time. you can have more screen time, like, but you're not really the focal point of the scene. Yeah. If if Tony's walking out in his back garden to feed the ducks, and we see his fat boy son playing the gaming console, that that's not real. You know what I mean? He's, yeah, he might be on screen, but he's not really doing much. I feel like in terms of actual development and stories i think christopher tends to be in quite a lot of stuff well especially compare if you compare christopher to the tony's actual men that he's made is is made men i mean the, christopher features a lot more than any of them yeah easily you can definitely see that he's being groomed here to be the next uh the next big thing but basically right this wedding has to get called short everyone has to go home and again, we see Tony basically going through, like, the art, not the attic, but, you know, the, the fent. He, he whips out, like, a Spaz 12 shotgun, a mini Uzi, and a couple of handguns. Why is that all stored in this house? Like, why does he need a fucking automatic shotgun in this house? Why not? It's America. Second Amendment. True. Aye, but it's incriminating him. That's why he's getting rid of it. All these guns are properly illegal, so therefore the Second Amendment's irrelevant. Why not get, a le why not get legal guns, though? Exactly, why not? Probably. No, but you're saying why have guns in the suits? Yeah. I don't think... Uh, I'm on it because they're illegal. Like, right. well, why would he keep them? Like, surely you would not have them at there. And, and then, then again, it's because if you have legal guns, they've got serial numbers. And then and Carmella they tries to make it a bit hard by pretending to greet. Well, this again. Fuck off, right? You see that engagement ring that he probably did stole? Or steal? Aye, raging, man. You'd be absolutely raging. And then, like, all this stuff about the indictments, and then he stores everything at... Olivia's uh, care home room. <laughs> like, what an idea, like, like, they know. Well, I mean, I must say, they know. Would that not be sure. one of the first places to check? They know Tony visits her and they know Junior visits her. The two basically top guys. And the fact they're related to. Yeah, that's stupid. Would that not be one of the places to check if they're going to, like, uh, overturn everywhere and search for stuff? I mean, surely that's one of the places they would look. Well, yeah, exactly. We basically see the, the entire crew burning stuff. Christopher's not really doing anything, he's just sitting on his computer. 
He then gets talked with Georgie to go search for bugs in the Barra Bing restroom. But the previous night we did hear that Brendan's name was mentioned on the telly, which made Christopher very jealous, didn't it? I did not like Christopher in this moment. So he's sitting down with, what's her name? Adriana. They're watching the news and then the news refer to, to Brendan about how he was like one of... A soldier. One of the soldiers and how he was killed like a few weeks ago or whatever. And this seems to piss Christopher off because... Brendan got a mention as a soldier and Chris feels like his hard work doesn't get appreciated. He feels like he's not moving up the um, the ladder, so to speak, whereas he feels a bit jealous of Brendan because Brendan got some recognition on the TV. But let's be real, we know that Brendan wasn't a soldier. We know that, that the news have just got that wrong. And at the end of the day, he's dead. I thought Brendan and Chris were friends and he's, he's jealous over his, his murdered friend. He comes up with some really good, like, you know, thought, like, thoughtful lines, doesn't he? He comes up with, like, these... No, he does. I do like him. I just thought this was very selfish. No, it, he's, it, he's basically bitching over the fact uh, that his, no, it, his dead friend got a mention on TV. No, yeah. And you know what? This is this is basically the, the Christopher character in their tea. This is what he's like. You know, it, it kind of... It's also, like, Tony. They can just be really petty about stuff. It's so fucking petty. I can understand petty, but when the guy's dead, like, and he's supposed to be your friend. No, but it's like, you know. Chris... Look at, but look how pissed off he was a couple episodes ago. He wanted revenge. He wanted going. He knows, though. He wanted to kill Junior. He knows Brendan wasn't a soldier. He knows that he was far more. Thought of? An associate. To... Higher up than Brendan. Exactly. If it but... wasn't for Christopher, Brendan would probably be dead. Exactly, but again. So I don't, I don't see why. Does it mean that much to him that other people might think that Brendan was a soldier and. They look at Christopher and they don't see him as one. I, I just don't get it. I mean, for a guy that was so worked up about his best friend being murdered a few episodes ago and wanting to get revenge, and now he's, you know, he's, he's basically crying about the fact that Brendan got a mention on TV. I'm pretty sure Brendan would rather Chris. I mean, I'm pretty sure Brendan would rather not get a mention and be alive. Absolutely. But then again, he was a junkie, so maybe he would uh, go that way. But Tony says that he might be going on a vacation to Dr. Melfi, right? And then, when that vacation eventually arrives, uh, we get the introduction, I believe, of uh, FBI agent Dwight Harris, and he's got an Italian with him, which Tony, like, kind of makes fun of. And then there's, there's, like, a scene where he's looking through his fridge, and Tony goes, did you forget your lunchbox? I like that. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good, right? And uh, basically, they find nothing, because they've moved everything. But why is, is Shrink charging him for the session? I can see yeah, why, right? It doesn't but, happen. Yeah. I can see why, right? But at the same time, like... Well, obviously, but, Tony, I can't see why, because he's not happy with it. He's like, hold on a minute. I pour my heart out, man. Come on. But yeah, we, like, we see a lot, like, the introduction of her family just did not care. I, I didn't... I, yeah, I don't, I, don't really, I don't really need to see her family. Tony then asks her, well, what if I was in a car crash? Would you still charge me? She's like, well, you weren't. So. But you weren't. That's I, a good point. I, what if, though? Exactly. No, no, I think it's a very good point, like, but... It is what it is, and then uh, we cut back to Christopher, Tony phones him, tells him to get to the bing, and then this is when we see him basically going to the, uh, like the, what is it, the donut shop, man? I don't know, like Americans, the, the bakery, I don't know what they'd call it in America, but aye, this fat guy jumps him in the queue, right, and see the way people talk about the Sopranos as a very, like, it's, it's, it's done to a T and it's got everything in point, see this fat guy that comes in, I believe he called him Fino, mm -hmm. he is brought into the show in season three and he's called Fito. So how can they have the same actor playing two different characters and it'll be called like a big co continuity fucking quality show? You get me? I think stuff like that's very cheap. Uh, maybe they like the actor and just wanted to cast him as different characters. Fuck I know, but come well, on. Well I know, but I think if I think if he was only in this one scene you can maybe get away with it. They change up his appearance a wee bit? No, still a fat fuck. Oh. <laughs> well maybe. Fair enough. Still a fat fuck like so yeah, but he shoots him in the foot. Was this justified? Of course not. <clears throat> of course it wasn't justified, but... But well, I wonder, the, the, the shopkeeper was kind of disrespecting him a bit. But that's, I think that's what they're going for. It's like, that no guy... No one respects Christopher? Because he, 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 was, he wasn't a soldier? I don't think that guy was aware of who he was. Which kind of feeds in the, uh, Christopher's... Well, he was after that, I mean... Uh, absolutely, but it kind of just feeds in the um, Christopher's... Uh, Eagle Jr. then uh, visits Livia... In uh, our nursing home. Kill her now, please. Junior basically says that he thinks someone's probably going to be ratting in the crew because of all this, like, you know, like the raids and the indictments. And then she's like, 
Who knows what Tony's saying at that shrink? Oh, he hates his mother. Who God knows what he's telling them. Don't worry, I hate her too. Sorry. Like, <laughs> she's so saying that. The only one. Right? I know we can say, oh, she's ill, she's old, she's losing it, right? She knows exactly what she's fucking doing there. Yes or no? Of course. Like, she's actually trying to get her own son killed. Or at the very least, she's trying to cause a massive divide between him, her, him and Junior. And when she talks to Tony, she tries to paint him in a bad light. She was a shit mother, though. She should probably just accept it. Try and improve instead of doubling down and being shit till the day that she dies. Oh, that's what would make sense to me. Yeah, exactly. Like, But yeah, again, very, very stupid here for Levia, man. It's just like, you're, you're, you mean, you could get the two, the two, the only two people that visit you kill. Pretty stupid maneuver, if you ask me. Uh, Christopher and the Georgie guy dig up the body that Christopher was getting told to in his dreams that he had to move the body, so they move it. Oh, it's growing beard and fingernail. <clears throat> Big Georgie's sick. Thoughts on the moving the body? Was it really necessary? In, in broad daylight. In case they move it, in case they build a condo on top of it, man. Uh, whose decision is this? I mean, you got. Just Christopher is not the smartest tool in the in the toolbox. And then you've got the other guy who's an absolute He's dumbass. Called Georgie for fuck's sake. Georgia, Georgie is an absolute plank. I mean, what were they thinking? I mean, who who who, who digs up a dead body in broad daylight? Seriously. Well, exactly, but Tony. Uh, Especially with the current, you know, what's happening with Tony and the crew, like currently being under exactly. FBI watch. It's Which like, Tony <laughs> says to him. And Tony says to him, "Do you want caught? Are you suicidal?" And uh, Christopher says, I'm not one of those midget wackos. I don't need Prozac bait. And he's like, I'm not sk this skinny guinea doesn't need Prozac. He basically just buried Tony at every opportunity. I but I but felt, Tony can't react. I felt like, it was brilliant. I felt like Tony wanted to like open up and was like, it's okay, Christopher. I'm depressed too. Aye. And then Christopher just shot that down. And, and then Tony, wanted, like, ah, Tony wanted to kill him, but he couldn't kill him because then it would be like, fuck, I go to a shrink. <laughs> and then basically the episode ends. Christopher finds out over the... Uh, the, the message machine that he's in the newspaper. It's all good. We also had a scene where Tony and his family talk about Italians in America, but fuck me, it felt like it all went on for about 15 minutes. Yeah, they're talking about things that the Italians invented, and then his daughter, forget her name, Meadow, Meadow says, did the Italians invent the mafia? I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, Tony, Tony didn't like it. But see, I think Tony, he's like delusional as well. It's like all he cares about is like, you know, making money and providing for his family. He couldn't give a fuck about the history of Italians. Because see, if he did, you wouldn't go to illegal fucking ways of making money, wouldn't you not? No, if he cares about Italians, why would he want to further damage the name? Exactly. If he cared about Italians, wouldn't he want to live a clean life, a respectable I mean, Walter life? Walter White never claimed he was a fucking proud American by making meth. You know, he wanted to make some dosh. And on that note, guys, that's where the episode ends. The legend of Tennessee Maltesanti. By the way, we also want to make some dosh, so please feel free to subscribe, comment, and like this video. Absolutely. But for this episode of Sopranos, I am going to give it, I'm going to give it a 7. I feel like Christopher and Tony, again, carried it. I'll give it a 7 as well. I, I enjoyed it. I feel, like, I feel like a lot of the episodes are good. I just don't really feel like they're great. They just you know? lack a lot. I, yeah, like... A lot of stuff could happen. I mean, they kind of just feel like another episode goes by and nothing really groundbreaking's happened, guys. But anyway, 7 out of 10. Till next time. Peace.